hello guys welcome to part 2 of this video tutorial series on registration and login example in this part 2 we are going to create a jp entities so we create user and role jp entities and we establish many to many relationship between them all right one user can have multiple roles and one role can be associated with multiple users okay let's take a look at our entity relationship diagram so we have a user table and a role table and whenever we implement many to many relationship between these two tables then third table will be created and this third table will basically maintains the details of these two tables for example user table has id as a primary key and this primary key becomes a foreign key in a third table that is users underscore roles table and look at here role table also has id as a primary key and this primary key becomes a foreign key in roles underscore users underscore roles table okay so remember whenever we maintain many to many relationship between two tables then third table will be created and third table basically maintains the mapping between these two tables okay great we basically create user and role jp entities and we establish many to many relationship between them using jpa annotations all right in part one we have created a spring boot project and we have also configured mysql database uh, setup so look at here in application dot properties file we have configured mysql database and we have also created a database in a mysql workbench now in this part we are going to create a jp entities so let's go and let's first create a package and let's name it as a model okay so inside model package we are going to create jp entities so right click new and then class and let's give a class name as user all right so let's right click on a model package new and then again create a class and let's name it as a role okay open user class and let's define few instance variables private collection of roles so one role one user can have multiple roles right for that we are going to create collection of roles here and let's quickly create constructor and let's also create a getter setter methods to access these private fields okay now we have created a simple user pojo now let's make this class as a jp entity so we use jp annotations to make this class as a jp entity class so let's go and let's add at the rate add entity annotation to make this class as a jp entity and next we'll add at the rate table annotation to provide table details for example let's give a table name as users or just give a user and here we also define unique constraints so in our application email is going to be unique so for that we are going to define a unique constraints for email field okay we have column names attribute and here we just give a column name as email so this is going to be a unique constraints okay email is unique constraints in user table now let's add at the rate id annotation to make this id as a primary key and again let's use at the rate generated value annotation to provide a primary key generation strategy so let's give identity okay 
now what we'll do we'll give a column name for some fields and uh, let's go give a column name as post underscore name and let's copy this and let's also give a column name for last name field last name last underscore name here okay great so if you don't specify at the right column annotation then by default the name of the column is the field name and here again if you don't specify at the right table annotation then by default the, na uh, the name of the table is the name of the class okay great so this is our user jp entity now it's time to create a role jp user entity now let's define few instance variable here uh, private uh, long id private string name okay now what we'll do we'll quickly create a getter setter methods to access these private fields okay now let's make this class as a jp entity by using jp annotations use at the rate entity annotation and again at the rate table annotation and just give table name as role okay and let's let's create a primary key let's use at the rate id annotation to make this id as a primary key and again let's use at the rate generated value annotation to provide a primary key generation strategy okay so look at here we have a user jp entity and role jp entity in place it's time to establish a many to many relationship between these two entities so in order to maintain a relationship between these two entities we are going to use jp annotations all right so as i mentioned earlier we are going to establish many to many relationship between these two entities so we are going to use at the rate many to many jp annotation and again notice here we are going to use a unidirectional many to many mapping so many of the cases we retrieve a user along with its roles right so this is uh, is going to be a unidirectional many to many mapping hence we have a user and here collection of roles and we need to add at the rate many to many annotations over here so let's use at the rate many to many annotation here let's apply fetch type so fetch type let's say eager so whenever we retrieve a user along with a user we also re retrieve a roles right so for that we just give here eager so basically roles are retrieved eagerly so if you want to retrieve roles on demand then you can just specify lazy but we are going to give eager here because whenever we retrieve user along with user we also need to retrieve our roles okay it's associated roles and similarly let's add a cascade type here so let's add a cascade type as all so whenever we perform operations like persist merge remove refresh and detach on parent entity then this will be applied to the its child entities all right got it so whenever a parent entity will perform these operations like persist merge remove refresh and detach it also applicable to its childs okay in our case we have a user as a parent and roles as a child now as i mentioned earlier we are going to use a menu to menu right so in case of menu to menu we need to create a third table so let's use at the rate join table annotation to create a third table to maintain a mapping between these two tables so let's give a name to the third table let's say users underscore roles okay 
and in a third table we are maintaining a primary uh, the foreign key columns right so let me summarize what we have done we have added at the rate menu to menu mapping annotation to maintain a menu to menu mapping between a role user and role and this is a fetch type eager so whenever we uh, want to retrieve roles eagerly then we can specify fetch type eager and if you want to retrieve a roles on demand then you can specify lazy here and cascade type all so whenever we perform all these operations like persist merge remove detach and refresh on parent entity it also applicable to its sales okay and here we have created a third table using at the rate join table annotation and third table has a user id and a role id as a columns and user id is a foreign key from user table so user table basically has a primary key as id so this id becomes a foreign key in a user underscore roles table and again this id is a primary key in a role table and this id becomes a foreign key in user underscore roles table so this is a pretty much menu to menu mapping between user and role okay now what we'll do we'll run our spring boot project and we'll see whether this these tables are created in a database or not okay let's go and let's run the spring boot project and let's verify our tables in a database all right so look at here the logs printed on a console so basically three tables are created role user and users underscore roles okay now let's switch to the mysql workbench and let's verify these tables in a database so let me refresh the database and here we go role user and users underscore roles so three tables are created and this is the third table it maintains a mapping between user and role table okay so this is the menu to menu mapping between user and role all right so in this part two we have created a jp entities and we have established menu to menu mapping between them in next part we'll see how to implement a backend part for a registration feature all right great thanks i will see you in the next part bye